Welcome to Tech Notice, where there's no gaming benchmarks. What else can we do with these CPUs? And why did AMD send this 9950X3D to this channel so we can check it out? Potentially because they have finally created an ultimate CPU that can do both. What I needed to do is put my own money and buy the 9950X, which is this one here, and compare it, the 99X 3D versus the non-3D version, what's the actual difference? And when reviewing this CPU, I was actually very cheeky because uh, I didn't review it exactly like AMD wanted. So, do you wanna see what happens? Let's go. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. Before I explain the cheekiness, I want to say thank you to AMD. I have been saying on this channel that AMD, please, can we cover these CPUs as well? Sometimes they're not aware that their CPUs are actually really good on the channel. And I've been the one that's been perhaps saying during the last couple of years that Intel has been better, but tables might have been turning. I'll explain that in a minute, but um, Nvidia might be <laughs> the good contributor in this case because their 50 series actually makes a huge difference, which kind of makes Intel irrelevant. I just want to say thanks AMD for sending this one to here because I'm sure that you guys enjoy seeing AMD CPUs on this channel as well. If you do, hit that like button, let us know in the comment section below so I can send these comments to AMD and say, I, I, I told you. Okay, help me out here. But then uh, what about the cheekiness then? Why were you cheeky? Well, AMD sent this RAM kit, which is um, 6,000 megahertz, 32 gigabytes, uh, CL28. And apparently this is what is gonna give you the best performance on the CPU. And I didn't use this. AMD also sent me a motherboard. This one over here. And I didn't use that one either. They also sent an SSD. I did use the SSD because that's a good SSD. Samsung 990 Pro. There's nothing actually wrong with this motherboard either. Go check out the review on the channel. I've checked it out. It's absolutely fantastic. I actually tested it with the X870E Pro Art version because, you know, we're creators, creator channel. But apart from that, I've tested all the other CPUs with that one as well. So I didn't want to make sure that there's some BIOS differences just because one motherboard just does a little bit of cheekiness or something like that and makes the CPU go faster or slower. I didn't want any of that. There RAM thing is the main thing over here. First reason is on my channel, as you've heard before, I'm also testing the IMC. I'm testing how good are these CPUs with their integrated memory controller and how does this work? And to showcase that, I'm actually testing all of the CPUs with their stock setting of IMC. If you look online, the specs of this 9950X 3D, then the stock IMC is 5,600 megatransfers per second. And when you go down to four sticks, it goes even further down. So I tested it with 5,600 megatransfers per second, like the spec tell you. And I'm doing the same with all the other CPUs all the time on the channel. And second reason why I didn't use this kit is because it's 32 gigabytes. Some of these benchmarks that I'm running go over 32 gigabytes, so why do I cap the actual benchmark by having less capacity? That's not gonna look on the results, so that's why we're not using these. What RAM did I use then? Well, I used Kingston Fury Beast RGB, 5600 megatransfers per second. I'm using an RTX 1490, 360 millimeter AI or pretty much any one that you put in there. I've got different versions of uh, Acer Tech 360 millimeter AIOs, different brands, but they all cool them fine, so it doesn't really matter which cooler you use as long as they're not thermally throttling. For the operating system, we're using the Samsung 990 Pro, Project Drive 980 Pro. Let me take you a step back to the 7000 series. Ryzen 7000. Here's what happened. There was also a 7950X and 7950X 3D. If you remember, the 3D version was actually a little bit of a lower performance for creators. If you look at the specs in here, you can see that the base frequency on the 7950X 3D is a couple hundred megahertz lower. The TDP is actually lower as well, so they can't push as much power through because the 3DV cache they didn't really like the heat and so on. But now with the 9950X 3D, there is the second generation of 3DV cache. Because of that, they can push more power through and give it more heat. And if you look at the specs, the 9950X 3D has exactly the same specs as the 9950X, except for the cache. The 3DV cache, boom, 
double the amount in there in terms of you know from 64 megabytes to 128 megabytes that's absolutely amazing but the rest of the things are exactly the same and that's the good news so amd is going to be its own biggest competitor in this video but i want to show you the memory controller there as well because we're testing this also on the intel platform the intel core ultra 285k that one has a little bit of a faster ram 6400 megatransfers per second that's the imc on the intel one and then when you have four dims it goes down to 4400 9950x or ryzen 9000 it goes down to 3600 so intel does have a little bit of a ram advantage in terms of stock specs but that doesn't mean that you can't run faster ram on amd stick till the end of the video i'll show you that i'm fooling you as we go through this video because there's something here that you see and that's not actually what it seems like. I'll explain that later on in this video. I'll, I'll promise you. So firstly, looking at the power consumption, we can see that the 9950X pulls 200 watts, which is exactly the same as the 9950X. Both of these CPUs, when utilizing, I can see them pull exactly the same amount. The 7950X is pulling 150 watts, roughly around there. Actually, when you leave it for a little longer, it was pulling it down to 145 and so on. So we're pushing extra 50 watts through. Extra 50 watts if you think about it that's very close to their ryzen 5 cpu power draw the 65 watts if you wanted to do that that's insane and the intel 285k is pulling 250 watts or more firstly cinebench r24 and here the 9950x is going to be the base mark as all the benchmarks that you're going to be seeing the 7950x so the, from, if you're coming from the previous generation we can see about 11 percent slower performance on the previous generation on single core and about 14.3 percent slower in the multi-core score so healthy bump in there the 9950x is actually one percent faster in the single core score which basically means exactly the same and the multi-core score is about 5.3 percent slower in my testing which is interesting the 285k is about 9.6 percent faster in the single core scores and about six percent faster in the multi-core scores moving on to geekbench 6 the 7950x 3d is about 10.7 percent slower in the single core scores and about seven percent slower in the multi-core scores 9950x is roughly about one percent faster in the single and multi-core scores which means again exactly the same in the single core scores and about nine percent faster in the multi-core scores these are just synthetic benchmarks what about when we actually go into the creative creative benchmarks, creative workflows, first looking at photo editing. The 9950X is actually about 3.9% faster in the overall scores. Now, I would still consider this within margin of error and both of these perform exactly the same. In my testing, I'm seeing the 9950X 3D slightly slower. The 285K here though, so much slower, 18.4% slower than the 9950X. AMD has a big win in here and the 3DV cache here in uh, Photoshop, pretty good idea. Moving on to Lightroom Classic, the 9950X is now 6% slower. Interestingly, in Lightroom Classic now seems like the 3D variant loves the Lightroom Classic and performs a little bit better. And the 285K is 2.4% slower. So photo editing, AMD has clear win over Intel side. Now, Premiere Pro, and here I want to have a little note before we go forwards. I have been testing this on the RTX 1490. If I would have put it on RTX 5090, we might have seen a different result because now the 5090 or the 50 series support certain codecs that Intel QuickSync only allows on Intel side. So basically the advantage also goes on AMD if we test it with the 50 series GPUs. The problem is Adobe hasn't released support yet for the 50 series, even though the hardware can do that, software doesn't support that yet. So I can't show you that at the moment. So we have to test it with the old or current situation here but that's a reason to subscribe and stick around for the future videos by the way did you know that members already have access to some of the videos that you know are out there so if you're interested in that and want to see some videos early consider memberships but then looking at premiere pro the 9950x is within one percent in the standard and extended overall scores we can see that intraframe is slightly faster on the 9950x but then at the same time gpu effects are slower in the 9950x so basically what you can read from here is 
The X3D is exactly the same performance as the non-X3D. The 285K is quite a bit faster because of the Intel QuickSync. Basically, we see about 9.6 to 10% faster in the extended overall scores and about 13% faster in the standard overall scores. Some of these other bits like the long GOP scores go 22.7% faster, which is quite a lot. Again, if we get to the 50 series, the difference might not be that big. Moving on to After Effects and here the 9950X 3D is really tying with the Intel Core Ultra 285K. Overall score is within 1%. The GPU score interestingly is about 10% faster on the Intel side but then at the same time render and tracking scores are a little bit lower. The 9950X is about 5% faster but I think this could be within margin of error as well because some of the things are actually slower in the 9950X. I would say and even in After Effects they perform exactly the same. It could be here in After Effects that sometimes the program doesn't know which CCD to actually send the workload on because the 9950X has a 3D V cache CCD and then the non 3D V cache CD CCD, which means that sometimes, you know, tasks get sent to the wrong one, even though the speeds are still faster. Now we're not going to see that much difference between the 3D and non 3D V cache, but it's still sometimes the performance difference can be because of that, which means that software support and update will improve the performance in the future of this CPU. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, and here we can see that the 9950X is basically exactly the same as this 3D version. All the benchmarks here within 1-2% of each other, that's just literally within margin of error, they perform exactly the same. Intel here is exactly the same in standard and extended overall scores within 1-2%. So perform the same. The long GOP score, interestingly, because I think driver is just still with the Core Ultra series, is a lot lower than on AMD side. So even in video editing DaVinci Resolve, AMD kind of is better. Unless you're using IntraFrame Codex, then Intel seems to be better. So ProRes and things like that seems better on the Intel side. Let's move on to Blender here. And interestingly, I'm seeing the 9950X here slightly slower 4.8 roughly three to four percent slower here in blender could this be just because of the different blender versions accidentally i don't think so this is the first benchmark that i'm seeing the 9950x actually a little bit lower than the 9950x 3d interestingly even intel 285k is about 4.7 percent slower in the monster scene about 11 percent slower in the junk shop scene and classroom is slower again so amd seems to be winning in the 3d as well and when we move to V-Ray, we see the same result. The 9950X is about 4% slower in this, and then the Core Ultra 285K is about 7% slower in 3D. So what can we conclude here? This is an epic CPU. Here's why. Firstly, if you look at 3D, this is basically the best consumer CPU that you can get without going into that territory. And when talking about that territory, shameless flex in here if you know what's coming you know if you don't consider subscribing when we're looking at photo editing i would say the same amd seems to be absolutely killing it here this and the top end is very very tight i would say the only thing right now if you're doing is video editing if you're doing prores video editing then intel seems to be better and if you're using premiere pro that this time without the 50 series then intel seems to be better but all the other aspects of it really amd seems to be the one it's absolutely insane and to amd's credit they have created the ultimate cpu i don't know what the other reviewers have done because we all released the videos at the same time but go check out the gaming reviews i can pretty much promise that this 9950x 3d is just the best gaming cpu that's out there but not just gaming as you can see for content creation they have not cut the corners it's literally the same as the non 3d version so if you are someone who does heavy gaming but also content creation, you kind of don't have to make a compromise now anymore because there is one for you. This 9950X 3D is insane option for you. That being said, there might be a few reasons why you might need or want to get Intel because on the previous 9950X versus Core Ultra 285K video, there was a few audio guys there who commented that said that if they're using Thunderbolt devices, it's not gonna work on AMD. If you require Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 4 or 5, then Intel Core Ultra 
Plus is the one to go for. If you don't need Thunderbolt and you can get away with USB 4, AMD is the one for you. Pretty much any of the new motherboards will have USB 4 included. But just again, if you need any of the drawing tablets that require certain USB-C video output, you might have a stable performance on the Intel side. And then the one more thing on Intel side is a little bit of a faster RAM. Now you can get 128 gigabytes or even 192 gigabytes. Now we're talking about even 256 gigabytes on the AMD one. Most likely it's gonna run a little bit lower. Which brings me to the point of what have I been fooling you with. This inside here is not actually 9950X 3D. I just put a random AMD CPU in there. I think it's 9900X actually in here. The 9950X 3D is still testing because I wanted to know what happens if I actually go faster with RAM. What if I use the 6000 megahertz, a different kit that is 64 gigabytes, but 6000. What if we go over 6000? 6400 what happens then are we going to gain any performance in the creative benchmarks well if that is interest to you consider subscribing because i'm working on that video as we speak i've already done that on the intel side if you want to check that out go check it out but a little sneak peek for you if you want to you know know what's happening is interestingly when i put the test bench setup to 6400 megatransfers per second just you know dcop one on asus uh, motherboard enabled it and 6400 megahertz it just didn't post at all. But Asus has this clever RAM thing on the BIOS that you can go like XMB tweak or on AMD it's DCOP tweaked. And then when you put that one in, they put different timings in and different like, because Asus has already tested like tons of RAM on their motherboards. So they will just give you the best settings on their BIOS. And when I enabled the tweaked one, boom, I'm getting a post with 6,400 megatransfers per second, 64 gigabytes, absolutely no problem. And I'm testing it at the moment. Let's put the next one going. Okay, next benchmark. So that's interesting. That's coming up. If you're interested in that, stick around. And if you want to pick up this CPU, I'm going to leave it linked in the description below. In terms of pricing, it's probably going to be expensive, but if you want the best, you're going to have to pay for it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.